Hello. Hello. Welcome, Welcome to 8th grade, grade Math. math. I, I am Dana, Dana the Explainer, and today's, and today's lesson is all about, all about integers. integers. What is, what an, is integer? an integer, and what, and what can, can we do with integers? integers? All right, so what is an integer? The definition of, a, of an integer is a set of whole numbers and their opposites. So I want you to pause the video, write that definition down, then I'm going to talk about what the definition means. So a set of whole numbers and their opposites. If you look at the diagram above, um, it starts with natural numbers. Natural numbers are your counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. To make it a whole number, a whole number just means it also includes 0. And then to make it an integer, so it's your whole numbers, so there's no decimals, it's just your whole counting numbers. And then their opposites just means the negative versions of those whole numbers. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, on and on and on, in both directions. Alright, the next thing that we're going to do with integers is we're going to plot them on a number line. So we have negative numbers and positive numbers. And then use the number line to list these numbers least to greatest. So, let's see. I need to plot positive 7. So I'm just going to put a dot right at 7. Cross it off because I used it. Uh, negative 6 over here. Uh, positive 1. Negative 5. 2 and negative 1. So I plotted all my numbers on my number line and now to list them least to greatest you're going to list them left to right. Alright so my farthest left one is negative 6 that's my smallest number, negative 5, negative 1, positive 1, positive 2, and positive 7. And now I didn't have 0 listed above. However, just a reminder that 0 always falls in between all my negative numbers and my positive numbers. And now when you're thinking about integers, just a rule to remember, this is not the most mathematically correct statement, but what I like to tell students is just remember the bigger the negative, the smaller the number. So if you have negative 12, comparing it to negative 10, think of, well, 12 is bigger than 10, but since they're negative, it's the smaller number. The more negative, the smaller the number actually is. One of the common things to learn about when you're learning about integers is learning about absolute value. So I've got one box where I'm going to talk about the definition another box where I'm just going to do some very basic absolute value examples, and then on the next slide I'm going to give you four a uh, little bit more complicated examples of absolute value. So, the definition of absolute value is simply the distance away from zero. So, if I want to know what is the absolute value of three, you're just counting how far away is it from zero, and it's three units absolute value of 3 is 3. Alright, but let's say we're at negative 3. What would the absolute value of negative 3 be? Well, if you just count, how far away is it from 0? 1, 2, 3. It's 3 units away from 0. So we don't care about the direction, it's just the distance away from 0, and distance is always positive. So you can think about absolute value always being positive. Positive 3, absolute value is 3, and then the absolute value of a negative 3 is a positive 3. So here I have three basic examples of absolute value. I'm going to squeeze into this one box. So absolute value of negative 10, how many units away is that from 0? and it's 10. So it's positive. We turned my negative into a positive. Absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. 
Now, if you look at absolute value of 5, is 5 units away. So this stays the exact same. You don't change positive to a negative, it's just always positive. And then the last one's a little tricky, because students will see double negatives. Um, but what you have to do first, what is the absolute value of negative 2? The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, but then I still have this negative sign that I bring with it. So because I have the negative side out in front, my final answer is negative. Now, here are four more examples uh, practicing absolute value. So let's start with just the first two up top. On this first one, absolute value of negative 3 plus 22. So order of operations, I need to evaluate the absolute value first. Absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3, and now I bring down the plus 22. And 3 plus 22 is 25. The second example, however, is a little bit trickier. If you look here, I have an expression inside my absolute value. And we know the absolute value means, hey, make it positive. But you don't make it positive until everything is simplified uh, within the absolute value. So what is negative 2 plus 6? Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. It's a positive 4. And now we have to take the absolute value of the positive 4, which is 4. All right, now here are the last two examples involving absolute value. Now these ones include variables. Absolute value of 5x, in which x equals negative 2. So all I, all I have to do is plug in negative 2 to x. So if I rewrite this, it's absolute value of 5 times, I might actually use parentheses, times negative 2, so now 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, but that's still inside my absolute value. And then the absolute value of negative 10 is a positive 10. Alright, and my last example. 8 times the absolute value of y, in which y equals 3. So I'm going to write 8 times the absolute value of 3. Well, what is the absolute value of 3? The absolute value of 3 is 3, and then 3 times 8 is 24. So there's all my examples on absolute value. Now get ready for some exponents. All right, so now, uh, talking about exponents, we use exponents when we multiply the same number or variable by itself multiple times. So if we look, we have 3 being multiplied by itself twice. So if I write this expression with exponents, I will write it as the base 3, but to the power of 2, because I have two 3's. And then this is being multiplied by the variable x. x is my base, but I'm multiplying x by itself, so 3 times my exponent is 3. So now if we start with exponents, can we use the idea of exponents to evaluate these expressions? Starting out 2 to the third power means you're multiplying 2 by itself 3 times. Alright, so uh, 2 times 2 is 4, multiplying by another 2, 4 times 2 is 8. And this last example simply means I'm multiplying that base, negative 3, by itself. I have two negative 3's, and negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. So there is the concept of exponents. So our whole lesson is on integers, definition, least to greatest, and using integers uh, in the form of absolute value and exponents. Good luck with the lesson.